What's up fathers, it's your brother CJ. Welcome to the Divorce and Custody channel for men. Today we are featuring a topic on how to avoid committing suicide after your divorce. Uh, it has become uh, well known and well documented that over 3,600 men commit suicide after their divorce and more so men than women. And there's a real reason for these things. So we're going to cover several of those reasons. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, it's very important that we discuss how to be able to avoid committing suicide uh, whenever you are going through your divorce or after your divorce. Because a lot of men have not been taught that. A lot of men have not even prepared for life after divorce. Many men see themselves retiring, buying a second home relaxing on the beach uh, and having their social security and so forth after uh, retirement and that becomes a dream after or a shattered dream after the wife says she wants a divorce as you know 50 percent of uh, ma uh, marriages end in divorce and 80 percent of those are initiated and filed by women and so one of the things for sure that happens is the uh, impending uh, financial ruin that comes with uh, divorce. Now, if a man is not doing so well, he's not doing so well financially, usually a divorce is not going to impact him that much because he kind of remains in the same place. If a man is wealthy, uh, usually he can hire attorneys and he can be able to fight that and usually they'll protect his assets. But if it's a man in the, in the middle, uh, you know, middle man, in the middle income uh, type of man, for him, uh, there is an impending financial ruin and what happens is it is caused by the fact that there's going to be uh, at least 50% of his income is going to go to child support and alimony and court, uh, court fees and every other thing that's going to be needed for him to fight his uh, case in court. And divorce is a costly experience. So because of that, a lot of men find themselves isolated and then they find themselves with an impending financial ruin because they don't know how they're going to make or how they're going to earn any more money. And so that can lead a person down the path of, of committing suicide. And I want to encourage you today not to do that because when you are in that place, I want you to know that there is much, much more that you can do to begin to become financially sound in your life. This is not the end of you. You made it before. You doubled your income before. What you were earning when you were 20 years old, you've doubled that now. You have the capacity to double that now between now and the next 20 years. You have what it takes. The next thing is that the divorce system or uh, the legal divorce system seems to be uh, powered up against men. And so what often happens is now you're, you're a leader or you know, you're a manager at your company and now the courts are demanding that you begin to pay child support and alimony, all of the processes that have to happen through your HR department. All these things can create a level of humiliation, a level of embarrassment. Uh, you can be looked at in the courts as a criminal. You can be looked at as a uh, deadbeat. You can even be looked at as a person who is a non-law uh, abiding citizen. And you know that's all because someone said something that he said, she said in the courts. And we know that a lot of women, once they're going through a divorce, they're going to say things that didn't even exist. And they're going to call those things the A word. And we're not going to say what that word is, but you already know. If you're a man and you've been watching Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, you already know that these things are possible. And so when you are going through those things and you are feeling uh, that your privacy is being invaded, I want you to know that it's a passing phase that is going to happen, that it's not always going to feel that way. And that most people actually in your HR department, in your work environment, they're used to dealing with that. They're just not used to dealing with that with you. It, which is similar to when you go to court, right? When you go to court, you think that your case is, is, is unique, that you, yours is peculiar, that your situation of your wife cheating or uh, your, you know finding her lover in your house, you think that that's unique to you. The thing about it is it's not unique to you. 
it is, yeah, they, the judges have heard it hundreds and hundreds of times and they already know what they're gonna, sometimes they already know what they're gonna do and what they're gonna say. What you have to do is to protect yourself mentally and know that, at least have that awareness that those things are common and that you will come out of it. And that, you know, it's, prime, it's, it's for right now, just you're dealing with it for the moment. But in about six months, seven months from now, it won't even matter. It will just automatically come out of your check. No one is gonna be looking at you sideways saying you're paying child support because guess what? Probably 20 or 30% of the people that you already work with are also in the same situation. All right, fathers, uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. And also um, add any comments or any tips to help out any of our brothers that are going through a situation of even considering suicide. And uh, also I have the ebook, the 10 things that your lawyer won't tell you about divorce and custody. You can find that at the link below. Uh, and also uh, in the meantime and in between time, hit like and subscribe and share this uh, video with anyone you think that it can help. And uh, as always, it's CYA, cover your assets.